how can we make use of Lightroom's range masks to make this a better image? Let me show you with this example. If you want to follow along, you can find a link to download this raw file in the description of this video. And now let's begin. So before jumping into the whole masking action, let's first make sure to get the base image right. For that, we want to expand the basic adjustments. And what I want to do first is to fix the exposure. Right away, you can see this is a rather dark image, which I really don't like. I want the foreground to be brighter. And that's a reason for me to bring up the exposure a lot. So right around here looks much, much better for our subject. This obviously will blow out the sky, but I think in this case, having a little bit of overexposure in this image is not that bad. I do want to dial it down a bit by bringing down the highlights just so we can see the mountaintops a little more clear right around here. But otherwise, I think it's fine this way. Also, I want to make the darker areas a little brighter by bringing up the shadows. And let's also bring up the blacks. So exposure wise, this is looking so much better than before already. What I want to do next is I want to add some texture, giving this image a more sharpness. And I want to bring up the clarity to add more punch. And I want to slightly drop the dehaze just to add some more atmospheric haze on top. And let's also bring up the vibrance and the saturation to make this image a little more colorful. All right, so the image looks much better after the basic adjustments already. The exposure is much better than before. We do have a lot more details in this image. However, now we want to target certain areas of this image using luminance range masks. For example, we could make the mountains in the distance a little darker and thus add more contrast to the back of the image. We could also make those areas on that hill that got hit by the sun a little brighter, which also adds a little more punch to this image, or we could deepen the shadows in the foreground. So to start this, let's open up the masking panel. I think I want to start with the mountains in the back. So let's go click on the range and choose a luminance range mask. Once you have activated this mask, you see hovering over the image, you get the eyedropper mouse. And I want to click somewhere right in here in the mountains in the back. At first, this is not a good selection, but we can further adjust the luminance range in the menu on the right side. We basically want to filter out the sky, which consists of highlights. To do that, I'm going to bring down the point for the highlights. And as I bring it down, you can see the mask overlay change. Let's go with something like this and I can further soften the edge here by bringing down this point. And as I bring it down, you can see we are restoring those light rays spilling over the hill. These won't be affected by this luminance range mask. So we are really only targeting the mountains in the back. I can further refine this luminance range mask. So I want to slightly bring down this point for the shadows. And I also want to include less of the shadows. So I'm going to bring this point up further to the right. So to give you a little explanation, everything on the left side of the point for the blacks, as well as everything on the right side for the point for the highlights will be filtered out and not be affected by this luminance range mask. These handles in the center would just make the mask a little softer towards the edges. If I would pull it down, we would get a very, very hard edge towards the shadows. And the same happens on the other side. So we want to keep it soft like this. And now that we have nicely targeted the mountains at the back, we can further adjust the mask. One problem here is we are also including that church on the hill, which we don't want to change. So I'm going to say subtract and I'm going to choose object. With the select object mask active, make sure to click the rectangle select tool right here. And now I'm just dragging up a box around our church. And this will nicely get rid of that area of the mask. So I also want to subtract a linear gradient coming up from the bottom like this. And the reason is I want the lower part of the mountains to be a little brighter. So we get some kind of atmospheric case behind the hill. 
but in front of the mountains, just in the valley between those two things. So just like this should be fine. Now with the first luminance range mask set up, we want to bring down the exposure. We also want to bring down the blacks. And we can pump up the contrast a little bit. And to make those light rays a little more visible, we can introduce some more clarity in here. That looks great. So let me deactivate this mask to see the difference from before to after. And this is how we can nicely target certain ranges of our image. So let me continue. I want to target the highlights in the foreground. And you can see those mostly consist of a green yellowish color tone. So let me create a new mask. And instead of a luminance range mask, we want to choose a color range mask. Again, we get a eyedropper tool hovering over the image and we want to click somewhere in that bright green yellowish area. Again, we will get a very wide selection. We can narrow it down by using the refine slider. Actually, I might have picked the wrong color tone. So let me click in here one more time to target really only the highlights. And this is looking much better. Now, again, we can make use of the refine slider to get a softer selection going on just like this. And what I want to do with this mask is I want to push the highlights. So this is kind of like dodging and burning in Photoshop. Just want to bring it up like this. I also want to bring up the shadows and I want to bring up the whites. Now you can already see these areas start to look a little weird. That's because I set the refine slider to a very low value. I can bring it further up to kind of fix that problem. Actually, let me try targeting another color tone right here. This is looking much better. As you can see, it can be tricky to select the right colors in Lightroom. That's why most professionals prefer using luminosity masks in Photoshop because it's just so much easier to target these areas but I can just hold down the shift key if I want to select a wider range of colors and create another point right here. And let's see if we can target this point as well. This might not make sense, so I'm going to undo this change. All right, but this is looking like a proper mask. Let's continue. I also want to make these green highlights a little warmer. So I'm going to use the temperature slider and bring it up a notch. This will introduce some very nice golden hour like highlights to this image. And I think this looks really, really good. Again, let me deactivate this particular mask. So you can see the difference from before to after. Much, much better. Let's continue. I want to use another color range mask and I want to pick just this bright part on top of the hill with the church. Again, I'm making use of the refine slider, bringing it down a notch. And then I'm going to click on those two dots, choose intersect mask width and choose radial gradient. That's because I only want the top of the hill to be affected by this color range mask. Just want to change these highlights up here. And what I want to do in here is to bring up the contrast. And again, I want to bring up the whites. This looks great. So at the moment, I think I'm quite happy with the foreground. Let's work on the sky for a minute. I'm going to use a luminance range mask for this. So again, if we set up the range like this, it will cover everything from the deepest blacks to the brightest highlights. But for the sky, we only want to target the brightest highlights. So we want to cut out the blacks of this luminance range mask. We are going to pick the black point and drag it up. I'm going to place it somewhere around here. Now we still have more selected than needed. So for the next step, I'm going to pick this point for the softness of the mask and I'm going to drag it down. And just like this, we have a really, really good selection just for the highlights, including those light rays coming over the mountains. And what I want to do with this selection is to make it a little warmer, giving a more golden hour light to this image. So let's bring up the temperature. Just a little bit is enough. And I also want to make the light a little softer by bringing down the clarity. Wonderful. Now I want to work on the subject for a moment. So let me create a new objects mask. 
Again, with the rectangular selection, I'm just going to create a box around the church right here. And I want to bring up the exposure. I also want to bring up the whites. And I want to introduce contrast, so I'm going to bring down the blacks. And let's also make it a little warmer by bringing up the temperature slider. Wonderful. This just helps make the subject a little more visible because it was going a little under with all these changes. Now I want to add more punch. For that, let me create another luminance range mask. With this luminance range mask, I want to target the shadows of the foreground. So we can again use the eyedropper and let's click somewhere in here. This is already looking pretty good. However, I want to filter out the darkest points so we don't accidentally underexpose the image too much. So let's click on the point for the blacks and bring it up. Just a little bit like this and I'm also going to make it softer. So I'm going to bring this point up a little further. And then let's take the point for the highlights and slightly reduce the luminance range by filtering out more highlights. And I also want to make this area softer. So I'm going to bring this point closer to the left side. With that selection, let's bring down the exposure just a little bit. I want to be really, really careful here just to add a little more punch. And I want to subtract a radial gradient and I'm going to subtract this tree on the left side and I'm going to subtract the tree on the right side as well. Okay. Then I want to create one more luminance range mask and using the eyedropper, I'm going to click right here in the trees on the right side and I'm going to click on those dots, choose intersect mask, mask with and choose brush. I just want to target this little forest here. So I'm brushing over this like that. And again, I'm going to bring down the exposure to add contrast. Wonderful. And by doing all of this, making the left and the right side a little darker, we can direct the viewer's eye a little more towards the subject, which helps making this a better image. And I think we're actually done with the masking adjustments. So this was our base image and that's the image after the masking. You can see that's quite a big transformation. Pretty much all of this was done thanks to luminance and color range masks in Lightroom. As you can see, you can do some really crazy stuff with those masks. They are a little more complicated to use, but with a little bit of experience, it gets better and faster each time. So let me continue finishing this edit. I want to continue in the color mixer. Let's work on the saturation for a moment. I want to raise yellow and I want to raise green. I think this looks great. And I do want to bring down the blue saturation notch because the mountains in the back are a little too saturated for my taste. Wonderful. Uh, I think I also want to go into the luminance tab and I want to slightly bring up the green luminance and maybe yellow as well. But this is looking good so far. And we can also do a little bit of split toning in the color grading panel. Let's use the highlights, set up the hue to a golden hour like color. So somewhere around here. And I want to carefully bring up the saturation. I really want to keep it subtle. So I'm only using low amounts here. And finally, we can go into the calibration tab and let's bring up the blue saturation for a little more vibrance. Perfect. Now all that's left to do is the sharpening in the details tab. So let's bring down the radius, increase the details, add a bit of masking and increase the amount of sharpening. Done. And that is the image after just a little bit of Lightroom editing. I hope this tutorial was helpful and interesting. If you have any questions left, let me know in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.